Hey everyone, I'm Pratik, a dentist and specialty doctor. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the overseas registration exam in detail, what it involves and some key resources to help you prepare. Make sure to head over to examindental.com to access ORE part one and part two style questions. The ORE is an exam that overseas qualified dentists have to take in order to register with the GDC and subsequently to allow them to work in the UK as a dentist. Essentially, the ORE assesses clinical skills and knowledge for those whose qualifications are not recognised in the UK. It is there to ensure that candidates are working at the standards that would be expected from a UK qualified dentist. If you're unsure if the ORE applies to you, then there's a route to registration quick help tool produced by the GDC in order to help you determine this. The link's in the description. The ORE is divided into two parts. And through these parts, you're expected to demonstrate the skills and qualities of a UK dental graduate. If you do want one-to-one -one tutoring sessions regarding the ORE, again, make sure to head over to examindental.com where you can sign up for sessions at your convenience. In terms of applying for the ORE, there are a huge number of resources that are available online, particularly on the GDC website that you must follow very, very closely in order to make sure that your application goes through properly. I'm not going to go into detail on those resources, however, all the links are in the description. In terms of the actual content for the ORE, again, there are a huge number of resources on there, particularly on the GDC website. One of the key documents is the preparing for practice document, which highlights the key learning outcomes that you're expected to be aware of and able to meet if you were to pass the ORE. The questions on the ORE are essentially mapped to these learning outcomes, so the more you study them and the more you look at them, the better it is. The ORE exam, both part one and part two, are usually held in London. And as you've probably seen, if you have explored it, there aren't many places per exam. So it's really important that you're constantly checking to see whether the exam booking date has opened. And also you follow the exam application form properly to make sure that you don't make any mistakes in this. You'll also need an eGDC account in order to register for the exam. So I suggest you go over and register one now so it's ready when the exam opens. Let's now look at both parts of the exam in a bit more detail. We have part one. This is a computer-based exam and it is a mixture of extended matching questions and single best answer questions. There are two papers as part of part one and each of these papers lasts for three hours. Paper A covers clinically applied dental sciences and human disease and paper B covers clinical dentistry including health and safety and ethics. In each sitting of the ORE part one there are a maximum of 200 places and you must pass both papers in order to progress and be eligible for part two. When the results are given you will be given an overall percentage mark and then a general pass or fail comment. You can sit ORE part one a maximum of four times. Expense wise at the time of filming ORE part one costs around 800 pounds as expense is an important part of this process. We then move on to part two. Part two is about demonstrating your practical clinical skills. So part one is all about the theory and a written exam. Part two is a practical exam. Again, as I said earlier, the stations and the questions and the mark scheme are mapped to the learning outcomes from the preparing for practice document. So make sure to read that. Additionally for part two, there are specific documents for each of the stations and I'll link these in the description. I suggest you go and read them because they provide you with a huge amount of detail about each of these stations. I simply can't go into that much detail in this video. Part two is divided into four parts. The first one is an operative test on a dental mannequin or a phantom head. And in this, you'll be required to carry out three procedures in three hours. This could include cavity preparation for an amalgam restoration, could include a crown preparation, it could include impression taking, or even writing out a lab ticket. Again, going back to those documents I mentioned earlier, they provide some insight into the types of stations you may experience in this part. We then have the next part. This is the Objective Structured Clinical Exam, or the OSCE. This is where candidates visit a series of stations to test their clinical skills. And this could be ethics related, it could be infection control, it could be radiography, it could be history taking. Essentially, these stations could cover content from any dental specialty. Then there's the diagnosis and treatment planning exercise. In this, there'll be an actor and they'll provide you with a history about their dental problems. You'll also be provided with other resources that you may need, for example, radiographs, special investigations. Then based on this information, so the history and the investigations, you must come up with a diagnosis and then treatment plan the patient. In this station, you're assessed in five parts. The oral history, the provisional diagnosis and investigations, including the radiographer reports. They look at your written notes, making sure that they're contemporaneous. Your written treatment plan, Plan, and also the oral treatment plan that you communicate to the patient. This exam takes around 54 minutes. And then finally, we have the fourth part, and this is the medical emergency station. There are two aspects to this station. 
The first one is a scenario based oral exam. So usually three scenarios where they'll talk you through an emergency situation and you have to advise them orally how you would manage that situation. The other part is testing your CPR skills. So this is where you'll have to do a practical demonstration of CPR. This station lasts around 13 minutes, eight minutes for the oral exam and five minutes for the CPR portion. A really helpful document, apart from the ones that I've mentioned, is the common mistakes document that is available on the website. And this just shows you the common errors that candidates make when they sit these exams. In part two, a maximum of 144 candidates are allowed to sit the exam. The current cost of this exam is much higher than part one. It's around £2,929. Just like part one, you're able to sit this part a maximum of four times. If the only part that you fail out of part two is the medical emergencies or the CPR portion, you're allowed to sit this separately for £300 at the next part two sitting. However, if you fail it again, then you'll have to sit the entirety of part two again. So there I've gone through the basics of the ORE and what each part involves. So now we're going to look at some of the key books and websites to check out in order to help you prepare for the ORE. All the links for these are in the description. So first we have the Oxford Handbook of Clinical Dentistry. This has a huge amount of information across all aspects of dentistry. So it's a very solid book to get in order to start preparing for the ORE. There is also the Oxford Handbook of Applied Dental Sciences, which provides you some more of the theoretical aspects which may help you prepare for part one. There is also my own book, Single Best Answer Questions for Dentistry, which has hundreds of single best answer questions in order to help you prepare for ORE part one. Leading on from this, like I've already mentioned, make sure to go to examendental.com where you'll have both a range of single best answer questions and OSCEs to help you prepare for ORE parts one and two. You can also sign up for the one-to-one -one sessions. Another great book to look at is Medical Problems in Dentistry which will provide you with some information on other medical conditions that may influence dentistry. There is also the Master Dentistry series, which again covers, similar to the Oxford Handbook of Clinical Dentistry, a range of dental topics. It may not be as comprehensive as the Oxford Handbook, but personally I find the Master Dentistry books easier to read. It's also really important to have a good anatomy and physiology book. So going all the way back to dental school when you initially prepared for your dental exams, find the anatomy and physiology book that worked for you. Personally, I really like the Netters book for anatomy because this provide really clear, colourful images that I could remember. Because you're also tested on other key dental topics, make sure you have a solid textbook, for example, for microbiology, for radiology, like the Eric Waits book, just so that you've got a good overview of all the key dental topics. Make sure to also check out all the latest guidelines, so whether it's the SD SEP guidelines, NICE guidelines, Rhesus guidelines, or the Royal College of Surgeon guidelines. These will provide you with the basic information, particularly for the clinical skills within this exam. There is also the past test range of books that will help you prepare. However, these are slightly out of date now in terms of the content within them, so just be a bit careful. If you want a bit more information about each parts of the RRE, please let me know and leave a comment below. I thought it was just too much to cover within this one video. If you want to speak to me more personally about this, either go to the Dental Notebook Instagram account or the Dental Notebook Facebook group, all linked in the description, and you can send me a message. You can also directly book a one-to-one -one session on Examine Dental. If you are sitting the RE, good luck. I hope you found this video useful. I know there's a lot of content in it, but it's all really important, really valuable content. If you did find the video useful, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And until the next video, take care.